Vibrato is one of the things that makes playing a string instrument so magical, but it can be so mysterious to figure out. To keep you from getting frustrated, I've put together a few videos on how I think about vibrato. But an audience member reached out and asked me to make a video about vibrating in the lower positions, so that's what we're doing today. I'll link up to my other vibrato videos in the description, but a quick introductory exercise that I love is to just find on the G string the note D. If your bass is like most basses, the D will be right here at the neck block, but it might be a little bit higher or lower depending. So just find that D, put your first finger there, and just vibrate on that note. Notice I'm not using the bow right now, I'm just getting this motion going. If you can do that, great. If that's a challenge, watch some of those other videos and then come back to this one. Getting that first finger comfortable, getting that second finger comfortable on E flat, getting that fourth finger comfortable on E, and then adding in the bow for those notes. Can you do this nice and relaxed and unforced? Whether you stand or sit, getting those comfortable is the first step. But if you got that, now we're going to start moving back in position. And I like starting here because it's at the neck block. It's a nice comfortable spot for your hand to rest. And you can do it over this harmonic right here. The notes are a little bit closer together. It's also a little closer to your center of gravity. So the challenge is that you are actually, yeah, getting a little bit further away from your center of gravity, a little bit up here. Balance issues come into play. You may want to try sitting down and that might unlock a lot of things because there is a little bit of balance that goes on. And I will link up to some research I put together about that, but just a quick shortcut. If you're having issues with any of this, simplify, 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 figure out what the issue is, and sitting down might actually unlock a lot. But we will move down one position from this neck block position to where your tuning harmonics are. And I'm going to call that third position today because that's what our viewer wrote in and asked about. But I've done a whole video on various fingering techniques, which I will link up to here. So this is between C and D. And I also love that there are some harmonics here, so if you do feel anything locking up, you can just try the motion on the harmonic. Because one of the issues could be that you're getting farther away from your center of gravity and your fingers are spreading out a little bit. So just sort of figuring out and, and just psychologically realizing you've only moved a few inches. So this should really feel almost identical to this with the exception of there not being that neck block right there for you to latch onto. So find that C. You can go to C sharp. And practicing in front of a mirror is super helpful for this and, and angling yourself so that you can see the angle of your right arm to the... And, and getting an angle so you can see your left arm and the neck and the angle that they're at. I want to make sure that my left arm is 90 degrees so it is exactly perpendicular to the neck. Now, the base doesn't stand completely upright, when I play at least, there is an angle. So your arm will look like it's drooping a little bit toward the ground, but the important thing is to just look here and make sure that this is a 90 degree angle. If you're having issues, that is one of the most likely causes. I've seen from so many dozens and dozens and probably hundreds of students. If you're having issues, you're probably angled a little bit too high or a little bit too low. So just getting that Goldilocks and making sure you're comfortable is great. And again, just going back and doing a harmonic. If you feel yourself tiring out or locking up, Go to harmonics and just feel that nice loose motion. And I have found that vibrato tends to be something that you kind of burn out on, especially in the early stages of working on it. Or even now when I'm working up for a solo recital and I've been practicing for like an hour and a half, I will start to feel some fatigue in my vibrato and that's just a, a sign that I have to stop or I should stop and go do something else and then come back to it later. I'm doing these on the G string here, but obviously you want to do them on all the strings. So then just going to the D string, moving over to the A string. and you will feel your arm coming around the base. They will all feel slightly different. All, what is that, 12 uh, uh, points of contact in this third position. So this fourth finger here is going to be a really different experience with the neck and the hand than the first finger here. Even with the same position, that's a really different world. So learning all 12 of those angles, worlds, points of contact, however you want to think of it, is really helpful. Siri, stop transcribing everything I say, please.
days. There's nothing to stop here. After you're comfortable there, moving to second position. So first finger on that B, using my harmonic safety rope notes that I've talked about in a previous video. So right here. So we're only just a tiny bit different. This is gonna feel almost identical. It's just different pitches. And checking that angle as you go sure that there isn't any sort of elbow downing or upping or anything like that. And in terms of vibrato speed, I'm just going for a Goldilocks, you know, not too slow, not too fast kind of thing. You can get really scientific and put the metronome on and the wonderful Jeff Bradstage, who I had the pleasure of studying with a while back, uh, he would say, figure out what your comfortable vibrato speed is. So just kind of feel that. So if we're here and we put a metronome on, we think ya da 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 whether it's da 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 ya da ya ya, whatever's comfortable for you, it's probably not gonna to be too slow. That's what I, I found, that's what Jeff said, and I found that to be true. So whatever that speed is, just clock yourself. It's like a radar gun for someone, like a, a police officer uh, seeing someone drive by. And then over time, work that speed down or up, but generally down. So just finding a comfortable speed, which for me is around 60 beats per minute, thinking 16th notes, ya da 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 That's a great goal for vibrato on any part of the bass. And then you can speed it up, slow it down from there. I'm gonna just move down to first position. Obviously you can do B flat right there too, but let's just go down to first position. So we've got that fourth finger right there on the B. And now here's where this might start to feel a little bit challenging because of the balance, right? So we are a fair distance, like over a violin distance. So yeah, this is a different world. But again, simplify, break down the chain. If it feels like it's locking up or you're getting a little bit of this, go back to here or go back to second position or go between or just try second finger maybe. That tends to be a comfortable finger. Try it without the bow, try it without pushing the string down, try it in between the strings. That can be great too. Try it on the side of the bass. Just really look at the vibrato motion from all sorts of different angles. And so we're here on the A. Really checking in with that arm angle to make sure that it is 90 degrees. And your vibrato is probably going to feel a little wider because we are going lower in pitch, so the oscillation is less dramatic when we get down here. So I'm listening, but also using all the senses I can sight, smell, I'm not sure touch, using my metronome, using my mirror. Checking my harmonics if I need to. Trust but verify, I like to say. And these notes are getting further and further apart and that's just part of the challenge of this part of the bass as my good friend scale skills author Andy Moritz talks about just learning half position and first position is its own kind of peculiar thing and the half position you know at that point then it's about the stretch of the hand finally we get down to half position so right here on the A flat on the G string A flat and just remembering that this is the most extended our hands going to be. When I vibrate, I like to let everything be nice and loose, but in the same hand span that I'm going to need. I don't like to let my fingers compress into one ball of fingerage. I like to keep some space here. I do let one and two go when I'm playing four and I have three and four down. I can adjust my thumb. I try to keep it basically the same spot, but if there is, if it feels like it's a little locking up, maybe moving the thumb behind three and four will help and just finding something that is relaxed and free across the base in all these different positions and then adding in the other factors is important so if you're feeling any of that sort of like shaky you know like 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 
tensing all the muscles kind of vibrato that we almost never want, or at least I almost never want. Just breaking it down, trying without the bow, and get there. this is also going to be the furthest away from our center of gravity, you know, this comfortable area here. So just making sure that this is nice and free and that you're looking in the mirror to make sure that this is staying at a 90 degree angle. That is all critical. And just, of course, this experience is the most radical going across the strings here. This A flat. <laughs> Now you need to feel my arm coming around the bass. And then here, I'm adjusting my thumb just a little bit on the back of the neck to accommodate this, which I need to do a little bit more in first position and half position. So this A flat here and this G there, that is quite a different experience in the hand. And again, those 12 points of contact that you have in every one of these traditional positions is so important for vibrato. But there are many different ways to think about positions on the bass. And if you want to learn more about that, check out this video we've got linked up.